compassion come from? How does empathy work? What is the phenomenon of interconnectedness? Tibetan Buddhist monks and nuns have grappled with these questions for centuries, but for the first time in the history, they are using a scientific approach. On the path to fulfilling one of the visions of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the recent years have seen Tibetan monastic scholars engage with scientists in exchanging and expanding their ideas and knowledge about the nature of reality. Upon the instruction of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the Library of Tibetan Works and Archives Science Initiatives began in the year 1999. His Holiness uh, announced that he would like to introduce science education to monastic curriculum and assigned the library to shoulder this historic undertaking. Beginning in the year 2000 with its first science workshop for a group of 50 monks, the Library of Tibetan Works and Archives has been undertaking several initiatives under its science program. In this episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV, we would like to introduce you to the library science program for which we are honored to have Geshe Lhagdorla, the Director of Tibetan Works and Archives, with us for this conversation. Tashtile Geshla. Geshla, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has always been advising us to become a uh, Buddhist of 21st century. And likewise, the goal of the uh, Library of Works and Archives science uh, program is also to open up the 21st century to Tibetan Buddhism. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What does being uh, a Buddhist of 21st century mean? After <coughs> coming into exile, His Holiness really wanted the Tibetan children to get both modern education and traditional Tibetan education. And later on he felt it's extremely important for the monastics also, both monks and nuns, to uh, be conversant with science. So therefore, <clears throat> it is uh, with this background that His Holiness has always been talking also about uh, becoming a Buddhist of the 21st century. Now when we talk about Buddhists of the 21st century, we need to know the state of 21st century. 21st century is a century of information, inform century of dialogue, century of uh, uh, religious harmony, and century of unexpected change. So keeping all this in view, His Holiness was making this statement because one, if you look at the fundamental principles of Buddhism, it's more than a religion which can adapt to 21st century. It can go with 22nd, 3rd, <laughs> and on. And on. <laughs> so, so therefore, when he makes such a statement, he's really saying that you should make the fundamentals of the Buddha's teaching applicable, relevant to everybody's life. Like, like the teaching on interdependent origination, the teaching on impermanence. will stay forever. But, un but unfortunately, sometimes, despite all these actual happenings in the world, people may not pay much attention regarding the relevance of Buddhism in the 21st century. Because ordinary people, they may still, you know, find it comforting to go with all, you know, customs, traditions, going around the temple, circumambulation, rituals, and things like that. So he's always saying that these are minor, let us go for the basic teachings of the Buddhism and make it relevant in today's world and make Buddhism sense in today's world. With this statement, he's saying that you should gain proper knowledge of what is there in the modern education, especially science, and then make a comparative study of those, you know, philosophical or scientific teachings with the Buddhist teaching and make it relevant in today's world and make it beneficial to people's life. So that is his primary meaning, yeah. Recently, the library celebrated <clears throat> 20 years of Science for Monks pro, uh, program. Uh, what is this program, Science for Monks? The Science for the Monks started in the year 1999 mm. with the help of uh, a benefactor, uh, Bobby Sager Family Foundation. And when he met His Holiness the Dalai Lama and offered his help in any area, you know, he may be useful. And His Holiness immediately, without thinking, said, science. So Bobby Seger told me that from that it shows that teaching science to the monastics is there in His Holiness' mind for a long time. So then he came forward to sponsor all the workshops, programs, and things like that. 
So the science for the monks started in 1999. So this is a science program which is basically between the library. It's a library project, but <laughs> sponsored by the Sagar Family Foundation. So we, we, we are celebrating that. Actually, it's not 20 years, 22 years mm -hmm. of its founding, yeah. And uh, talking about Bobby Sager, there yeah. is an initiative under uh, his name, yeah. uh, Sager Science Leadership Program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what is this program? The, the, uh, the main objective of this program is to produce more leaders and teachers to advance monastic learnings in nunneries and monasteries, right? This, so yeah. how many leaders and uh, teachers this have is, this, is, this is something that I considered in relation to Bobby's nature. Because Bobby is uh, basically a philanthropist, and he has been traveling almost all around, all around the world. Seventy percent of his time in a year goes around traveling around the world and helping wherever there is, need, there is a need. But he does not offer 100 percent support. He would say financially offer 50 percent support, and then he would say the rest you need to do. You should all become leaders. Mm -hmm. So I took the clue from there. And from there I started that the, the, the monks and nuns who study science also later should be able to help others. Later in that sense, not necessarily a president or prime minister, nothing like that. But to help others once you get that knowledge. So that's the idea, yeah. Right. And then there is monastic graduate project, right? Yes. So um, most of the Kimbos, uh, yes. Geshe's and yes. uh, Lobuns, the, yes. the, the abbots and heads of the monasteries participate yeah, yeah. in this. What are, uh, you know, what are the expectations from them? What do the, you know, the program expect out of these graduates? So once I got this uh, kind of vision from His Holiness Dalai Lama and support from Bobby Sager, I was kind of free to come up with new initiatives and new ideas to make it more successful and compelling. So I started a few initiatives. One initiative which you just mentioned, the, the science for the Cambos graduates, monastic graduates, I came with this initiative because I thought that unless you are to bring about a change in the monastic curriculum or monastic institution, which is not that easy, especially in the beginning, so you need to recruit those who already have completed their studies. Because those who have already completed their studies, they have much say in the monasteries. They can be teacher in that sense. So with that plan, I recruited all these Kembos and Geshe's from different monastic institutions. So they are already kind of leaders, they are already teachers. So what they need is more exposure, especially in science, so that in their teaching or in their you know, work in the, the administrative circles, they can be more influential. So that, that is the reason, yeah. Okay. Uh, His Holiness was installed as the uh, Presidential Distinguished Professor yes. at Emory in the year 2007, yes. yeah. and it signaled a firm commitment from both the sides to work towards the benefit of a common humanity. Mm -hmm. And one of the much talked about science programs of the library is mm -hmm. uh, uh, Emory Science Initiative, ETSI. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this program, Kishla. Very interesting program. Uh, His Holiness has connection with Emory University for a long time has been visiting that university for a long time. And then when I became director of the library, my very good friend, Geshe Lopsang Tenzi, who was already teaching there, he was very happy that I become the director. And he said, Geshe, let us do something together. Do you have any plan to come to this area? Then I said, I have no immediate, no, sorry, I said, I have immediate plan uh, visiting Miami and things like that for one month program. Then he said, can you come to Emory? I said, no, my hand is already full, I can't come. He said, no, this is a very important you know, program we can you know, make. And then, then I asked him, what is the program? Then he brought this subject of teaching science you know, initiative with the Emory University and said, this is very important. I'll definitely come. So I spent, I think, one week there. I was welcomed by Emory University as a distinguished fellow visitor. And with that, we started this science program with the Emory University. Kishla, overall, uh, when you look at these programs, yeah. uh, science program of yeah. the Library of Works yeah. and Archives, yeah. there are different projects, yes. Science for Monks, uh, Sacred Science Leadership Program, Monastic Graduate Projects, and then uh, the Emory Science Initiatives. Mm -hmm. So overall, when you look at all these programs, what do you see the major <coughs> outcomes of these uh, projects? No, regarding major outcome, when His Holiness, you know, visited Emory University and also discussed about uh, the possible outcome of science teaching. Bobby Sager also discussed this with His Holiness and asked this question to His Holiness, what would you expect? 
His Holiness said, maybe 100 years after. <laughs> so he had that vision, you know. And uh, so from that point of view, we may not be able to claim, you know, having achieved much. But having said that, like for example, I remember very clearly when we uh, first published the first handbook of science, which included physics, neuroscience, and everything, and they launched it in Emory University with His Holiness's presence, His Holiness was overjoyed. He said, I did not think about it. I visited many universities. They made tall promises and nothing much happened. But here you have like produced this excellent book within just short time. So that was like one thing. And then, of course, not contented with that, we came with this, especially with the Emory University, which I did not explain much, is uh, one big achievement uh, working with the Emory University with that science program is we, have, we were able to publish proper curriculum science books, both in physics and uh, neuroscience and things like that. Mm -hmm. And now they are all translated. I think we have published over 10 books, mm -hmm. which are all bilingual, English and Tibetan with illustrations. So everybody can, the monks, everybody can now study this comfortably. Mm -hmm. So that's a big achievement. You know, translating, you know very well, translating just one book is not that easy. Then we also managed to publish, uh, for the first time probably in the Tibetan history, publish a proper science dictionary. There's one thing. Then also we were able to, uh, I think in, it was year 2014, I think, uh, the maj all the three major uh, Gelugpa monasteries plus Tashi Lumbo, you know, they signed, uh, we had two days intensive meeting, mm -hmm. how to make the science curriculum adaptable to the curriculum that they have in the monastery. And then after two days meeting, they all signed with the, head, with the presence of Gandhi Thiva, Sharva Chujie, Changsa Chujie, all the abbots, they signed and made it a regular study program in their monastic study. So they have to study science for six years. The first four years when they're just preparing for Geshe and the next two years in the first years of Geshe Tharampa degree. So, so, so that is now a permanent you know, program that is studied there and then examination is also done on the science program. So that is big achievement. It's really difficult to move the whole monastic institution to come up with such a conclusion. And of course there are other uh, monasteries nearby uh, belonging to other Buddhist schools of thought also. So those are big achievements. And then in, in, in addition to that, whether you, you may count it in the big achievement or not, but we also work with uh, Department of Religion to, uh, or to organize a science program every, every year. And then we, the science staffs also teach uh, science to the nunneries nearby. For example, our science staffs are right now in Copper Monastery teaching the nuns science there. So these are some very, very important achievements. And then the, the, the most important achievement I would consider is the change in the attitude that we were able to bring about in, in, in the minds of thousands of monks, you know, in, especially in the uh, big learning centers. In the initial stage, honestly speaking, both the people who are in the higher administration and also the monastics, they would like look at the teaching of science with a sneer, thinking that this might interrupt our Buddhist study, things like that. So there was, a, there was much reluctance. We have no time to tell the whole story, but you know, we had to <laughs> undergo many difficulties and problems. But now, you know, the monks and nuns in most of the monasteries and nunneries, they, they, they take it for granted. This is something that we must all study. So they're exposed to it. So that, I think, is a big change. Because to change the mindset of it is very, very difficult. Yeah. One last question, yeah. a very basic thing that yeah. people would like to know. Um, what is the level of participation from the monasteries and nunneries? Do the monasteries and nunneries uh, in India, Nepal and Bhutan all participate in the science program? Not all, not all. That is uh, a little bit difficult still because we can't, we can't force this program to any any so monastery. Especially in the in initial stage, we had contacted all the Tibetan Buddhist schools of thought and also monasteries in Nepal and also monasteries in you know uh, Bhutan, things like that. But uh, some of the monasteries are not forthcoming. Some of them send monks to participate for a few years, you know and then nothing you know, happens, things like that. So, so, so that is one thing. But we are trying our best to uh, involve as many monks or nuns as possible. And uh, not only this, we also organize 
major science and Buddhist dialogue conferences and also major science exhibitions. One of the exhibitions all, went all the way to New Delhi and then San Francisco and drew the attention of many, many people. So, so there are many <laughs> dimensions in this program. Mr. Keshila, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. There was Geshe Haudarla, the Director of Library of Works and Archives. Uh, through this conversation, we hope you have gained some insight into the library's very historic initiative, its science program. Thank you for watching In Conversation with Tibet TV.